Hey guys, Eric here, and uh, today we're going to do a little flight down to Dickinson, North Dakota. That's K-D-I-K. -K. On our way to Dickinson, we're going to talk about how to land this aircraft. Um, maybe you are an aspiring pilot. Maybe you are, have been thought about thinking about getting your pilot's license, but you just never have. Um, today, we're going to teach you how to land. Yeah, so come along with me, and uh, we'll go over to... Dickinson. Check, amps are check. Everything's in the green, but all temperature, all temperature is coming up. Instrument check. Good, good, good. Let's get the verify with the fuel elevation. Check, 18. Just under 100, good. Cross check. All right. Let's do our run up. Those are those flight controls. Free and correct. Doors and windows closed and latched. Primers in and locked. Mixture is rich. Throttle 1700 RPM. Magnetos. Left. Equalize. Check. Right. Equalize. Check. Cycle prop. Good. And verify the temps in the green. Good. Check hot for carb heat. RPM drop. Suction gauge is good. Throttle idle. GPS nav. KDIK. Alright. GPS nav set. Tow bar is not on. Fail on takeoff. I always like to do a fail on takeoff. Um, procedure in my head just in case something were to happen and if something were to happen with the engine etc we would not try to turn around until we got to a thousand feet AGL we have fields all over so there's no point in trying to take that risk of turning around uh, we got a field straight ahead of us we got a field that would be even better probably slightly to the uh, left of us and we've got a road to the right of us with power lines so got some options there take off briefing I'm alone weight and balance is good We've got full fuel, lights are on as needed. Fuel area traffic system 3585, Foxtrot taking off runway 28, departing to the west. Fuel the traffic. Check in final, good. Good. Close this door, or window, excuse me. Verify five fuels on both. Half flaps open, full forward, full forward. Always gotta give some right rudder when you take off. And we're looking for 60. There it is. Whoop. Under the wind a little bit there. All right, give ourselves some nice right rudder. All right, and we're climbing pretty good. Oh, it's bumpy up here than I thought it would be. Wow. All right, looking for a thousand AGL. Now we'll pull back power. And there's a thousand. Easing back that power. And some people don't wait till a thousand. They say it's bad on the engine. My philosophy is engine can be replaced. I'd rather have a broken airplane that I can't fly anymore than BB not being able to get high 
high enough, fast enough in case of emergency. That's my take on it. Some people are like, well, if you treat your engine bad, then something else could happen during the flight, especially in IFR or in the night or whatever, which I get it, that's true. But to me, and statistically, takeoff is the most dangerous part of the flight. Hands down, no questions asked. There's no debate. Takeoff is the most dangerous part of the flight. And so I uh, like to mitigate that risk by just getting in the air as quickly as possible. That's why I'm full power, full forward, full everything, um, up to about 1,000 feet AGL. Ears are popping today. I'm a little stuffed up. Not too bad, but it, it's definitely there, so. All right, let's get our autopilot set. And I always like to make sure that my autopilot is doing what I told it to do and not just going on its own merit and trying to do something else. So, yep, it's looking good. But today, I wanted to talk about how to land an airplane um, in case of emergency or maybe you're a student pilot and you just... Um, are just learning landings. These these are five tips that are really going to help you. Or, you know, like my wife flies with me all the time. She's not a pilot. But these are five tips that she could use to um, land the airplane in case something were to happen to me. Tip number one is manage your airspeed. Manage your airspeed. So on a, like an electronic a glass cockpit, it's gonna be like a band like this. This is my airspeed right here. On the standard airplanes, it's going to be, it's going to look like this, okay? You can see it's saying about the same, 141-ish, you know, it's, that's right about the same as what this is saying, okay? I'm going to show you how you can learn any airplane, what their um, landing speed needs to be, what you need to be by the time you get down to the runway. It's very, very simple, and all you old pros are saying, yeah, I know this already, but for the ones who don't know, this is this is going to be extremely helpful. You can get into any airplane and know what the stalling speed is instantly, and that stalling speed is what you're going to want to be close to when you're close to the ground. This is the ground, okay? This is you. Right as you get close to the ground, you want to stall the airplane. You want to make the airplane stop flying. The way you do that is by slowing it down, okay? And the slower, it, once it gets to a certain speed, it can't stay in the sky anymore. It can't stay flying. And so you want to hit that speed right when you're um, above the ground so you don't just crash, right? So that's the whole goal of, of landing. And so you see, so you see this green band right here. That green band is where you're going to stall. That's like what, 60, like seven, right? 65 plus about two, it's about 67 uh, miles per hour. This airplane's miles per hour. Okay, so that's where I'm going to stall if I don't have flaps. No flaps, that's where I'm going to stall, about 67 miles per hour, all right? If I do have flaps, it'll be the right arc. The right arc, see that? That's 60 miles per hour, all right? That's how, it's really easy. You look at the bands. Now, on the glass cockpit, it's the same thing, except you just can't see it right now. But once we start to slow down, you're, you'll see, so you can start to see that, uh, that white, band right there same thing same as this that's going to be your stall speed that's all you need to worry about so the yellow arcs and the red that just means don't go that fast all right as you're descending don't go that fast is manage your airspeed i don't care if it's in a field i don't care if it's on a road somewhere i don't care if it's on an airport you want to manage that airspeed get it as slow as you can as you're coming in for that landing that way when you come close to the ground you just pull back that yoke a little bit and that's how you're going to slow yourself down right you slow yourself down by the power right here and by the way when you're when you're trying to run an aircraft and you don't know what you're doing push both of these knobs in and just leave them all right especially when you're low to the ground just leave them if the airplane starts sounding weird pull this one out a little bit don't worry about that push them both in and leave them so you're going to manage this is your power knob don't push this one. Pull this one out a little bit. That's actually how you're going to manage your altitude. You're going to slow yourself down by pulling back. All right. So as you pull this out, you're going to pull this back, and you're going to slow down and sink at the same time. That's how you 
have a good descent is when you pull the power back and pull the yoke back. You're going to slow down and descend at the same time. So that's how you manage your airspeed. That's how you start your descent. All right. That's tip number one. Tip number two. Tip number two. Stay ahead of the airplane. All right. So what does this mean? Stay ahead, staying ahead of the airplane. It, well, staying ahead of the airplane has many applications. It means always know what to expect. Now, I understand as someone who's never flown before, a student pilot, is, this is very hard to do. I'm not, not saying it's easy. Even for experienced pilots, they get behind the airplane sometimes. It's not a fun place to be. But you always want to be thinking about what am I supposed to be doing next? When you're landing, especially when you haven't done it before, you should always be doing something. Managing your airspeed. You should always be, you know, making sure you're lined up. Maybe, maybe that's um, trying to figure out where you're going. You may not use, know how to use the GPS yet, and you need to figure it out on your iPad. Load Google Maps. I'm, I'm not kidding. Load Google Maps. Find the nearest airport on Google Maps. It can be international airport, whatever. Put punch in the dial. One two one point five. Remember that. One two one point five. That's the emergency frequency. Put that into the radio. All right? Put that into the radio. 121.5. Push the talk button and say, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is a passenger flying an airplane, and I have no clue what to do. All right? Those are the kind of things you need to be thinking about. Staying ahead of the airplane. Um, where am I going to land? What, what frequency do I need to, to punch in, you know? Look it up. Google it. Like, if you're if you're below like 8,000 feet, you have internet. So Google it. What's the emergency frequency? If you don't remember 121.5, Google it. Or just make sure you're staying ahead of the airplane. Always thinking ahead. Rewatch this video while you're in the airplane. I'm not kidding. If it comes to that and you need to know, rewatch this video. And but that's staying ahead of the airplane. You know, hey, I've got a ways to go. We're in the air. We have time. Um, but I need to figure out what what I need to do. Oh, here comes the practical tips, all right? Tip number three is aim to, at a point before an area that you intend to land, all right? All right, so as you might be able to see as I swing around here, for a final runway 2-5. Dickens and area traffic, system 3585 Foxtrot, turning final runway 2-5. Alright, so I'm aiming for the end of the runway. Alright, that's not where I'm going to land. I know that. But that's still what I'm aiming for. Because I know that as I level out, I'm going to float just for a little bit. And um, so I'm going to aim just before it. And the last thing is, as you come down, don't focus so much on the runway or the surroundings, but kind of focus on the horizon and do the work in your peripheral. So as I'm coming down and I'm looking around, making sure we're good, I'm on the glide slope here, a little off the uh, runway, but airspeed, I'm just managing it here. I don't really want to get too slow, but uh, all right, let's slow her down here. So as you're coming in, don't worry so much about being on the center line. Just worry about being straight. Bleeding off that airspeed. And stall horn and touching down. All right. Way off the center line. And I did that because I want to tell, show you that that is not, that's okay. You're not going to die if you're off the center line. You're not going to die if you, you know, that's fine. Um, it's not, it doesn't have to be a perfect greaser, but if you're watching your airspeed, that was a perfectly smooth landing, but it wasn't, it was off the center line, but we were perfectly lined up. And I landed off the center line to show you that as long as you're lined up right, it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to be on the center line all the time. All right. And I kept my eyes on the horizon and I was just taking everything in on the peripheral. And that's how you land an airplane. It's, it's as simple as that.